Films in the 1950s looked very different to how they look today. We've had so many wonderful changes and advances in the tools that we use to record our videos and films. So getting that postmodern YouTube video to look like a modern 1950s 35mm projector screen can be a little tricky. But with the right guidance, it makes for an excellent video effect. Today, we are going to be following Andrew, as he shows us how to do this edit using a tool called Adobe Premiere Pro. Watch him and take note of his actions and the tools that he uses to create this effect. Before starting the project, Andrew understands that he needs to collect the right resources, such as the right footage, sound effects, and music in order to make this project look and sound just right. First, Andrew collects the footage that he wants to use for his sequence. He can create his own using pretty much any camera, or he can find some stock footage. He decided to use a little bit of both for reference. Next, he wants to look for some stock projector sound effects. Old films tend to have that sort of slight background scratching noise that vinyl records emanate. So you can be crafty and look for some royalty-free vinyl record feedback sound effects for that extra touch of immersion. Then Andrew decides to look for some black texture overlay or green screen footage of projector film grain. This way he can add the film grain on top of the footage in his sequence. As for music, he knows that you can find some decent royalty-free music on YouTube Studios audio library. Oh, I suppose Andrew decided to use one of their old ragtime songs. How predictable. Now that he has everything that he needs, Andrew goes into Adobe Premiere Pro and starts creating the project. Once all the footage is collected, he starts labeling and ordering them into color-coded folders. Andrew knows it's a good idea to start building this habit to not only look professional, but to also stay organized. Now it's time to start putting all of your footage into the timeline. He creates a new sequence and starts dragging everything that he needs onto the timeline. Before Andrew starts playing with the audio, he wants to add some effects onto it. He goes to the effect panel in the project window and searches FFT and distortion and adds them onto the audio respectively. Then he goes to the effect controls panel in the upper left hand corner and makes some slight adjustments to the distortion and then to the FFT filter. Once he opens the FFT filter, it looks like just a straight line, but then he adjusts it by clicking on parts of the line and turning it into a box. Tools that we use to record our videos and film. So far it sounds alright, but he knows that it can sound just a that little bit better, so he adjusts it to his liking. So getting that postmodern YouTube video... Now that sounds much better. Next he starts adding the vinyl feedback. The audio is a little short, so what Andrew decides to do is duplicate it, holding the Alt key and dragging it across the timeline. Finally, Andrew decides to add the music. Films in the 1950s looked very different. As you can probably tell, the music is a little too loud and clear. So Andrew decides to add on the FFT filter and make similar adjustments like he did with the audio. Then Andrew turns off the keyframes and adjusts the volume to make it a little bit quieter for the duration of the video going to be following Andrew. Before we start adding any visual effects, if you have any overlays, text, or animations that you want to add onto your timeline, I would recommend adding them now before you start working with any filters. There, that looks pretty good. The next thing that we want to do is add the projector film grain. If you need to, you can add an extra track onto your timeline by right-clicking the timeline and selecting Add Track. Andrew has two options before him. The first option is green screen. The way how he adjusts this is by going to the effects panel and searching for ultra key, dragging it onto the projector footage, and using the eyedropper tool, he selects a part of the green on the footage. Now, it is completely gone, and all we have left is the film grain. However, Andrew also wants to try out the other piece of footage that he has that has a black background. 
So what he does is he goes to the opacity in the effects control panel and makes his selection in the blend mode. Andrew now decides to go with the linear dodge. The final thing that we want to do is add an adjustment layer to the entirety of the timeline. You can find the adjustment layers by going to the projects panel and look for the sticky note next to the trash bin. There you can add an adjustment layer. If necessary, add an extra track. Add the adjustment layer on top of the projector layer. And make sure it stretches across the entire timeline. Finally, Andrew goes to the effects window and searches for noise, Gaussian blur, color balance HLS, and crop. The noise will add a little bit extra grain to the footage. It's good to set it between 7 and 10. Gaussian Blur will add a little bit of fuzz to the footage, making it just that little bit more old-fashioned. Setting the saturation to negative 100 in the color balance HLS will desaturate the entirety of the footage, making it black and white. The crop feature will add some bars onto the sides of the footage, making it look like it was filmed in that old-timey aspect ratio. Set the left and right bars to about 15%. And finally, you can set the edge feather to about 32%, and that will add that little bit extra fuzziness to the sides, making it all the more believable. And now Andrew decides to make any final adjustments that he feels is necessary to make the intro as best as he can. Films in the 1950s. And there you have it! That's how you can make a vintage projector effect using Adobe Premiere Pro. I understand the quality of the tutorial may not be the very best that you have seen, however I will admit to you this is one of my first times of attempting a proper structured tutorial, and any feedback that you would deem necessary, whether it be with my methods of working in Adobe Premiere Pro, or with my tutorial structure, would be appreciated. Liking, commenting, and subscribing do also help, but I don't see it as very necessary. Thank you all so much for your time, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.